Hi grade 11s, today we are doing the following question from this exam paper. It's question 6 and we are given k of x. k of x is a hyperbola and we are given h of x. h of x is an exponential function. 6.1 says write down the equations of the asymptotes of k. So this is k over there. So they want the asymptotes of the hyperbola. So grade 11's for the asymptotes of a hyperbola, you look at the denominator of the fraction, eh? So the denominator is x plus 3. Make that equal to 0 and make as if you're solving for x. That's the equation of the first asymptote, eh? And then do you see this number over here? That is the horizontal asymptote. That one is called y is equal to 1. So here, this x plus 3, that x is equal to negative 3. And this 1 over here stays a 1. And remember, they want the equations of the asymptotes. So you can't just write negative 3 and 1. You have to write x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 1. Our next question, 6.2, says determine the x and y intercepts of k. So for the x intercept, we let y be 0. This is y, the k of x. So we make that 0. So we say 0 is equal to negative 4 over x plus 3 plus 1. Then I'm going to take this 1 over to the other side. So it becomes a negative 1 negative 4 over x plus 3. Then I'm going to take this whole denominator and I'm going to multiply that by negative 1. I'm going to have negative 1 and then x plus 3 is negative 4. And then I'm going to remove the brackets. This times this is negative x. That times that is negative 3 equals negative 4. And now I solve for x. Negative x is negative 4 plus 3. And then I get negative x to be negative 1. And then I divide by the number in front of x, which is an invisible negative 1. If there's no number, there's a 1. So what I do on the left, I do on the right. And I get my x-intercept to be 1. So the x-intercept is 1 and 0. Then for my y-intercept, we let x be 0. So I write my function down. y is equal to negative 4 over. Now do you see there is the x. I'm going to make that 0. So 0 plus 3 and then plus 1. And I get my y-intercept to be negative a third. So my y-intercept is 0 and negative a third. Third. Our next question says, we have to write down the asymptotes of h. So h of x is here, and that is an exponential function. So for that exponential function, we know an exponential function only has one asymptote, and it's this number over here. So that is a horizontal asymptote. So y is equal to that number. y is equal to negative 4. Now we are on 6.4. 6.4 says, sketch the graph of k. So sketch k of x and h of x on the same axis. Eh? Show all intercepts and show all the asymptotes. Okay, so we have to sketch the hyperbola and the exponential function on the same set of axes. Eh? So I'm first going to sketch this one for you. Let's sketch the hyperbola. We've already worked out important information. Eh? We've said that the, let's write it down here. We said that the one asymptote is x is equal to negative 3. The other asymptote is y is equal to 1. Then we also said the x-intercept is 1 and 0. And the y-intercept is 0 and negative a third. That is enough information. Okay, let's go. I just copied the information there. Step number one, 
when we are sketching the hyperbola is to draw in your asymptotes. I'm going to use another color. My first asymptote is x is equal to negative 3. So that must be somewhere there. Can you see grade 11s? It doesn't have to be according to scale. So I'm going to draw this line in here. This line is called x is equal to negative 3. Okay, that's that line. And this line is called y is equal to 1. So somewhere here, y is 1. So this line is going to go through this point. And I'm going to call this line y is equal to 1. Then I'm going to look at the equation of the hyperbola. The equation is y is equal to negative 4 over x plus 3 plus 1. Can you see that this is a negative over there? Eh? Now because that's a negative, when you draw your hyperbola, because that A is a negative, the hyperbola is in quadrant 2 and 4. But now you must just notice something, eh? Do you see the blue lines? Those are not the x-axis and the y-axis. That's not that, eh? That is actually the asymptotes. So the asymptotes is the cross. And then you look at quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So look at the asymptotes, not the y-axis and the x-axis, eh? So when you look at our asymptotes here, eh? do you see that? So can you see grade 11s? This is the asymptotes. There is the cross. Eh? That's the cross. So that means the hyperbola must be in quadrant 2. That's 2. And then this over here is quadrant 4. Because this is the cross. But you see this side, I don't know how it must look like, but it must look like this. It must go through points. So let's quickly see. My y-intercept is 0 and negative a third. So maybe it's somewhere there. And my x-intercept is 1 and 0. So it's there. So this hyperbola must go through these points. So my hyperbola will look something like that. That is negative a third. And that is 1. And that's how the hyperbola will look like. And I just put my arrows there. Remember they said we must also sketch h of x, eh? So I'm going to write the important information down for h of x so that I can sketch the graph. So for h of x, this is the equation. 2 to the negative x minus 4. The first thing that's important here is the asymptote. The asymptote is y is equal to negative 4. Let's look for the x-intercept. We're going to let y be 0. I'm going to rewrite this. 0 is equal to 2 to the negative x minus 4. So 2 to the negative x, I'm going to take the 4 over, becomes a positive 4. Then I'm going to rewrite the 4 as an exponent like that. Once these two are the same, they fall away. So 2 is equal to negative x. Divide by this negative over here, because I don't want that negative. So divide by negative 1, this is negative 2. The x-intercept is negative 2 and 0. And then let's work out the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we let x be 0. And I say y is equal to 2 to the negative 0 minus 4. And I get my y-intercept to be... negative 3. The y-intercept is 0 and negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to sketch the exponential first on the side. First, I'm going to sketch the asymptote. So my asymptote is y is equal to negative 4, okay? So it's this one over here. So y is equal to negative 4. I know my x-intercept is negative 2 and 0. So that's over there. And I know my y-intercept is 0 and negative 3. So that's over there. Grade 11s, if you don't know how to draw an exponential, I would advise you to do a little table, eh? So I would just do a table. And I know this is negative 2 over there. And this is negative 3. So I would have x values and y values. And then I will start with an x value on this side of negative 2, eh? 
So let's start with any x value. Let's make it negative 3. And then I will make this one 0. And I will make this one 3. So you can choose any numbers, eh? So if you make this negative 3, if I sub in negative 3 into my function, so if I make this x over here, if I make that negative 3, so I write y is equal to 2, negative, and then I make that negative 3, I get the answer to be 4. If I sub in 0, I get the answer to be negative 3. And if I sub in 3, I get the answer to be negative 3, 8. So I'm just going to plot those points, negative 3 and 4. So negative 3 will be there, and then 4 will be up there somewhere. That point will maybe be there. Then I have my x-intercept. Then I have 0 and negative 3. It's this one here. And then I have a positive 3 and a negative 3, 8, so somewhere there. So the table just helps me see the shape. I don't have to do a table. So if I didn't know how this thing must look like, then I can now clearly see it will look like that. The only points you actually need grade 11s is you can show the x-intercept and the y-intercept. But now you know how the shape must look like. So I'm going to take this exponential and go up to my hyperbola. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw the exponential function in here. So first, I'm drawing in the asymptote. So the asymptote is going to go in first. So this line is called y is equal to 4. We had an x-intercept that was negative 2. And a y-intercept that was negative 3. So somewhere there. So we know the shape will go something like that. And then we can just add the arrows in here. And then I'm going to write in my coordinates. This one here was negative 2. And this one here was negative 3. The blue one is called k of x, and the green graph is called h of x. There we've sketched the hyperbola and the exponential function. Our next question is 6.5. It says, if p of x is 3 of h of x, so if p of x is 3 times h of x, write down the equation of the asymptote of p. p is p of x, eh? So, okay, let's write the information down. So, I'm going to show you two ways to do this, eh? So, 6.5. So, let's write down P of X is 3 times, 3 times H of X. So, P of X is 3 times H of X. This is H of X. Okay, so P of X is... 3 times that is 3 times 2 to the negative x. And then 3 times a negative 4 is negative 12. That is P of x. So the question is, what is the asymptote of P of x? So this is the asymptote. An exponential function only has one asymptote. So it's a horizontal asymptote. And the equation is y is equal to negative 12. I see it from the equation. Another way of doing it was to say, what is the equation of the asymptote of h of x? So the, the asymptote at the moment, if I look at that, is y is equal to negative 4. So now I must just know that they took this and multiplied it by 3. Because it's 3 times h of x. So my new equation is y is equal to Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Okay, so this is only one mark. The next question is 6.6. .6. It says, write down the equation of Q. So Q, in this case, is a reflection of H in the y-axis. Q is actually Q of X. Q is a function. So how did we get Q? We took H. Let's write it down. We took h of x. And then what did we do to it? We then reflected this in the y-axis. So what does that mean? That means that q of x 
is h of x, but wherever there's an x, they change the signs. So if it's a negative x, that x becomes a positive x. Everything else stays the same. And that's q of x, because they said write down the equation. That is the equation of q of x. Our last question says, determine the x values for which h of x minus q of x is equal to 0. So where is the one graph minus the other graph equal to 0? Let's write the question down. Where is this minus this equal to 0? So the question can be changed to where is this equal to, then I just take this over to the other side. So where is h of x equal to q of x? For which values of x are these two graphs equal to each other? So you can say, let me see where is h of x equal to q of x. I write h of x down. This is h of x. And I write q of x down. So let's say I bring this one over to the side. Okay, let's bring it over. Then it's 2 to the negative x. 2 to the x minus 4 and then plus 4. These two will cancel. Now I'm left with this. And do you see the base numbers are the same? So when the base numbers are the same, then this is equal to that. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is equal to that. So now I need to figure out what number can be here that will make the x's the same. So the only way this solution can work is if x is 0. Because if this is 0, negative times a 0 is still 0. So, the only way this thing can work is if x is 0. So, if x is equal to 0. And so, the answer is, these two graphs will be equal to each other where x is equal to 0. And so, that is the final answer.